right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine, Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined from Toronto in Canada, Chris Nicolau. How are you doing, Chris? Good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and Chris, web consultant strategist at Brainbox Labs. And uh, so, so Chris, before the pandemic, a lot of people were talking about digital transformation, automating, you know, getting their tech stacks working properly together, all of this great stuff. But there was a lot of lip service being paid to it and very little of it was actually being done. Pandemic Agreed. hits, suddenly a lot of people realize that uh, when you suddenly virtualize a whole company, if you don't have good processes in place, if you haven't done the digital transformation, if you don't have the automation, then you're well behind the eight ball. So when you work with when you work with clients today, um, how often do you find that there is maybe there wasn't really a great deal of thought or planning that went into their processes and the technologies that they have brought in. Because I think we mentioned before we went on air, I mean, a lot of the time you'll have, you'll be working with companies who have six or seven tools trying to do something working, to, but it's not delivering even like one solution. Yes. Yeah. And um, so I, I think in, I think in general, uh, people get a little complacent. Uh, I think they feel, you know, either money's coming in or things are working well. And uh, I heard that from actually a lot of um, insurance companies that we used to work with was uh, certain insurance brokerages that, you know, year over year, they were losing 5% of their customers, but they're still high-fiving and still, you know, hey, we're retaining 95% of our customers and, you know, not building digital solutions, still being brick and mortar and, you know, again, the, the, that retention was still there. So they, they didn't panic, they didn't worry. And I, I think it's a, it's not a great mentality to have um, as you're going along, you know, I guess chugging along and uh, time passes that 5% a year turns into 30%, 40%, 50%. And then, you know, where are you then? So then mm -hmm. it's, it's when you're in a dire situation, you need to make a change rather than being more proactive. And, you know, to your point of a lot of people or a lot of companies uh, during COVID have, you know, stepped up to the plate, saw that, oh my gosh, like we have to change the way we do business. And I think that was a, a rude awakening for some companies and for others, it was they, you know, they were either already on the path or they already had a plan in place and they just, you know, rushed that execution because of what happened. So. Yeah. So when you when you typically uh, engage with uh, a client, um, are they coming to you when they have, I mean, as we said before, maybe they have invested in a lot of technologies, but they haven't really figured out the overarching strategy or whatever they're trying to do, or they have discovered that these technologies don't work the way they expected them to, or they don't work together the way they expected to. So what kind of situations do you typically walk into? All different kinds. Uh, mm -hmm. you, I think you hit the nail on the head though. It's using a lot of different tools and not, it's kind of like plugging holes, right? You're in a, in a boat and a hole pops up and you stick a finger in it. And they're constantly doing that and trying to solve those problems. When if they kind of took a step back and just looked at what are their actual pain points? What's the actual problem? And it, it's a lot easier for us to come in to do that. You know, we're not invested in their business as much as they are. Uh, we're seeing things much more clearly. We can take a step back and, and look at it from um, a different vantage point. So I, I think in a lot of cases, they're just really in it. And sometimes you're, you know, I always joke around with the team, just kind of, you know, headphones on, head into it, and you don't, you kind of have those blinders on. So sometimes it does take, and I know some people, you know, cringe at when other people say this, but sometimes you need a consultancy to come in and our consultant yep. come in and say, this is the problem because they can come in with a fresh set of eyes. Yeah, and, and I think probably one of, the, uh, one of the contributing factors over the last while has been how easy it is to 
sign up to a SaaS solution, right? I mean, once upon a yes. time, if you wanted to bring a technology into a company, you went to IT after all these discussions and all of that. <laughs> right. Now, now anybody in any department can go, oh, I just found this cool technology and we'll sign up to it and for our department or whatever. So that's kind of exacerbated the situation where there, there is a lack of strategy and people just signing up to different mm. like solutions all over the place. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know where you were going with that, but you're you're absolutely right. It's it, um, they have everything at their fingertips now, and they see a, a new shiny object. And hey, this is going to satisfy. This is going to do it. This is the one. And um, what they don't realize is that it's they're normally either kitchen sink applications that have all these different kinds of features, or they satisfy a very um, mm. specific uh, niche, which is great for their business they're very successful those SaaS products and everything like that but they don't perfectly match what they're doing we're actually doing some consulting right now for a, a client that they're kind of the perfect case where there is a solution out there that pretty much solves 70 to 80 percent of it which is rare of, of mm -hmm. all the, and their process is super tight they're really good at what they do but the problem is is that the automation isn't there within that tool as much as they want it to be and that's really where they're lacking so um we're going to be going through a discovery with them. And really what we're probably going to recommend is taking a look at that tool and then say, okay, what can we add on to this? So behind the scenes, so they don't even see anything. Right. All they, all that happens is that it automates the, the communication between that application and QuickBooks, that application and, you know, whatever else you're using for inventory management and all those different things. So just creating those behind the scenes connections that nobody's ever going to see. And we can, we can't even put on our site. <laughs> but we're really helping that customer, um, that client, uh, complete that cycle without having to always add another person. And I think that's the biggest thing that there is a misconception with consultants that we come in and, you know, we say, okay, you know, when once we build a solution, you know, hundred thousand dollars, you're going to be able to fire fifteen people because it's going to automate mm -hmm. all these things. No, that's not what it is. It's we're going to come in here we're going to automate these manual processes that don't make sense for people to be spending time on during the week and you're going to redeploy those people within your business and by doing that not only don't you have to no you can not hire more people and grow the company even larger you can redeploy those people to be more effective in what they're good at in the first place yeah, no, I, I agree totally. And I'm glad you brought that brought that up about automation, because I think automation is, is critical. And companies really need to invest in it now and work with people like yourself to make it happen. But there is a misconception, as you say, about automation, people think, oh, it's going to just automate me out of a job. Well, yeah. the point the point is no. Where you should start your automation journey is exactly what you said on those routine, those road tasks that need to be done manually. Right. That if you automate them, then you're allowing your most expensive and prized resources, your human resources, to actually focus on more higher value activities. That's exactly things that things that computers can't do very well. Those mm -hmm. problems that humans, you know, just it's, it's a, those problems that like you're, when you're driving through an uh, intersection, there's something like 10, 10, 11, 12 different things that in an instant we evaluate when we're driving through an intersection at a green light. And those are the kinds of things that computers well, used to not be able to do well. They're starting to do better. But those types of human judgment calls, feelings, all those different things, especially from a sales perspective, like you can't tell a computer to feel out a situation with a customer when mm. you're on the phone with them uh, to understand, you know, how to close them best. And when I say close them best, in the most honest way, yeah. the product is right for them, but maybe they're skeptical. You know, a computer is not going to be able to say, well, I need to use this tactic on them because we know the product is good and we know the product can help them. They just need a little bit of a push. Um, again, redeploying those people to do what they do best rather than making them do manual you know paperwork stuff manual emails um following up with customers just the things that can be automated that again we're just telling them hey you're really good at this so if we were able to maximize your time doing this you'd be able to close more business you'd be able to um produce higher revenue bring more money in for yourself from a sales perspective just the the possibilities are endless once we remove those little barriers of things that people don't like doing anyways mm -hmm.
Yeah, no, I, I think I, I think it's uh, it's great when people do that. But like I said, I mean, it, it it needs to be explained to them what the benefits of automation are and what they're not, and like uh, alleviate alleviate their their fears. Um, and do you see this? Is this uh, is this starting to become a bigger part of your business? Like, are people really starting to look at automation and workflow more closely than perhaps they have in the past? Very much so. Actually, you bring up a good point where nowadays it's how do I become more efficient um, with my process with how you know things are just functioning sometimes sometimes clients come to us and they just they don't know what the problem is they don't they know that there's a problem like everyone's working in the company uh, you know well they're they're stellar mm -hmm. employees they're everyone's you know humming and hawing and it's everything's great but they're still like they're still uh, issues with efficiency there's uh, there's issues with uh, or they just don't even know what the problem is they're like I, I don't understand why this is not working as well as I thought it would you know we have, the process is in place it everything works but for us to scale the business when we get in more you know we get in more customers we literally have to just add more people and it's it's one of those weird things where uh, that's the first sign that I see that you know hey they, they tell me hey we're going to, you know, as we're growing and we're going to add five more salespeople. Mm -hmm. And I, I think to myself immediately, okay, well, why? And I usually ask them in the most polite way, well, why do you need to add five more people? What's the reason? We're like, oh, well, we have to do this, this, and this. Okay, what does their day look like? And they start talking about their day. And there's usually about a half an hour to two hours, two and a half hours of stuff that they're doing that is not sales, that is mm -hmm. following up with customers, that's, um, again, doing sometimes it's it's not not anymore. Thank you know, luckily, uh, printing off paper and sending them paper yep. contracts and all these weird things that um, it, if you just change your process slightly, uh, they see a, a drastic change in their efficiency. And then again, you know, for them, you don't have to hire those five people. Um, you may have to hire one person, and that one person is really needed. You know, every person that you add is very meaningful. So. Did I answer your question there? No, no, totally. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely, absolutely. That was, that was great, and I, and I think that's a I think that's a great point for people to listen to because I do think now is the time to embrace all of that, but embrace it in a thoughtful manner, in a deliberate manner, as we were talking, and, and get ahead of get ahead of it as opposed to to be reactive to it, and then just um, um, Chris. Uh, how would you say when you engage with customers and that, I mean, how would you say the level of technical sophistication is changing within a lot of businesses, maybe even businesses that you're dealing with that maybe traditionally weren't as tech heavy? Yeah, there's definitely a, a, a broader understanding of things that are available or what can be done. Maybe they don't know to what extent. Uh, they're still very surprised, like, oh my gosh, you can do that. You know, it's absolutely we can. So I think a lot of the, you know, to, a, to an earlier point of yours, I think a lot of the consulting is education, education on what is available to them. Mm -hmm. um, so then they start thinking like we do. And then they start coming to us with the ideas like, hey, I know you can do this. So we're having a problem over here. And then again, get them thinking about more when something's wrong, look at the root problem, look at the actual pain point. What's, what is the, what is your pain right here? Well, I hate when I have to do this, or the salespeople are always telling me that, you know, this is, uh, this is difficult, or even watching them kind of go through their process. It's why do you, why do you have to do 10 clicks to get to the thing that you want? And why is that happening that way? So, um, I, th I think I veered off on a tangent here, but I think a lot no, of no, it no. is education. No, so, no, I, I 100 percent with you. I think you're 100. I think you're absolutely correct that a, a lot of it is education. And as I said, I think a lot of companies, you know, the processes and the way they do things just grow organically over time, and nobody really looks at them uh, from an efficiency point of view. And I think that's changing uh, because I think obviously the pandemic helped to accelerate or definitely focus oh, right. people's yes. attention. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely, definitely. Yeah, and um, and and so, you know, as somebody who's on the leading edge of technology, where 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 does technology? Where do you think the next big focus on technology is going to be? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, it's something that some of our clients ask us, and, mm -hmm. but not a lot. You know, where where are we going? And 
everyone's going to say probably this thing and, um, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning. So I think that it's, it's how do we, so we've, we've automated the process, you know, we've, yeah. we, we've built the thing where that, that solves the problem. We've then automated as much as we can. We're doing AB testing to make sure that the product is performing well and that we're making good decisions based on user behavior. So what is the next step? The next step is to take away or to, to try to allow the machine to learn and to better understand how to convert. What is the best lead to pick up? What is the, you know, what is the best, um, the best process? What, what yields the best result essentially? So I think, I guess it, it would be that um, not even, I guess the, the further step would be the machine learning, but, you know, initially just, um, you know, being able to score things in a, right. a more artificial intelligence way. The the name the, the term is um, is not coming to my mind right now. But yeah, in that sense, we're you know we're trying to mimic how we think. And I think that mm -hmm. again to to further take away those those mundane decisions that computers can make. And also sometimes they make better where we can't look at a million records right. of data and be able to evaluate those in an instant like they can. So now let's start utilizing them for what they're good at, ones and zeros, you know, to be, to, to dumb it down and yeah. um, allow them to make good decisions based on data. Yeah, and, and there's a couple of things you touched on there that I just want to come back to. Number one is uh, AI and machine learning, right? Because I mean, a lot of times people confuse the two or the AI gets so hyped up that when people hear AI, they again, it's like the automation, they think, oh my goodness, artificial intelligence, I'm going to get replaced. And I think part of it is, and I'm sure you come across this, is separating the hype from the reality for customers. Definitely, it's, it, it's like, what is that? When they hear that, they think of, you know, um, they think of weird things, they think of, you know, movies that they've watched in the past where literally things are going to take over and, you know, jokingly, right? Uh, but yeah. also true, they, they get a little bit of that same fear that they used to have with automation. Oh my God, we're going to automate these things. And what it comes down to is that, yes, we're getting rid of those, um, those tasks that just uh, machines can do. And for the artificial intelligence portion, I know it sounds a little scary, but it's really just there's things that they can do that um, allow, or sorry, there's things that they can do way better than we can. There's things that they can do. There's things that we can do that, you know, I, I don't think we're going to get to that point where we're going to really diverge and, you know, they're going to be able to take over everything. So mm. uh, I, I do, I do agree with you when people hear that they do get a little worried, but just understanding how those applications are. Yes. There's the Googles of the world and Facebooks that are using artificial intelligence to do wild things. When we're talking about a business application, mm -hmm. it's, you know, uh, how do we easily find efficiencies in your business? And, you know, that AI can point it out, you know, it could score everything for you to say, hey, this is the least efficient part of your business. Okay, let's work on that together. How do we make them more efficient on the human side? Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, and it comes back to your point, whereas I think... Uh... <laughs> I think a lot of your role is absolutely in, in educating people uh, to to understand what's possible, what's not possible, and what's what's um, what's preferable as opposed to even what's possible. That's a good point too. Uh, you don't, <laughs> I I think they think the world sometimes like, hey, oh my gosh, you're you know AI, you know machine learning, whatever the case is, and their mind really wanders and like the sky's mm -hmm. the limit sometimes. But it's really hey. The, you know, let's let's live in this kind of um, let's live in the space where uh, we're using it to be helpful, to be useful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Well, listen, Chris, this has been fantastic. All of Chris's information will be below this video. But before we go, Chris, please tell people a little bit more about what you and Brainbox do. Great, thank you. Yeah, so uh, we are a, a you know web digital consultancy. Um, you know, we specialize in web applications, e-commerce and you know building those solutions that automate business and you know from from our perspective we help all different kinds of clients from you know big budget large clients to the mom and pop shop you know we recently did um, we recently built a, um, a logistics system for a camp they pick up and they drop off wow. 900 to a thousand kids every single day during camp 
So we had wow. to go over and beyond what Google had, Google Maps had available to them and uh, build a sophisticated application that would route, you know, route and find the best way to pick those kids up and drop them off at camp and then vice versa. The slogan for that that project was no kid left behind. And <laughs> I can say before the pandemic, you know, that was literally the email that the client sent us, Chris, no kid was left behind. So yeah. these are the kinds of, these are the kinds of products we build. These are the kind of relationships we have uh, with our clients. And, you know, we absolutely love it. Yeah, it's fantastic. I love that. No kid left behind. Yeah, from camp. It's <laughs> right? going to be a good thing. We didn't yeah, lose right? any this year. Not this year, <laughs> Another, no. You were talking about client, customer retention. Retaining all of the kids is probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how you retain the customers. Retain all the kids. <laughs> exactly. The children that matter. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, listen, thanks uh, very much, uh, Chris. Thank you all for watching and for those who will be listening later as well. Uh, and I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.